let's take a look at uh, 11.6. This is where we kind of uh, stop on, on, on yesterday uh, in, in the sense of, of how do we solve this radical equation. And again, reminder to solve the radical equation, uh, the first thing you need to recognize, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, is the radical, right? First, what is the radical, right? Is it a square root? Is it the Q root or if it's a four root? Uh, but whatever the radical is, is or does this radical isolate itself, right? Is it by itself? And in this case, it's by itself, and once we know that it's by itself, all we need to do is if it's a square root, in this case, it's a square root, all we need to do is we need to raise it to the square uh, power, right? The power of two, because the square root, the square root and the square, right? This square root and this square, they will cancel each other out. So if you raise it to the square on the left, you have to raise it to the square on the right hand side. So the square root and the square cancel out. We have whatever in the radical, we take it out. Seven times seven, this thing will give me 49. So again, uh, solving this radical expression is very doable. And, and some of you probably say easy because that's all we do is we raise it to whatever the power is so that we can get rid of the radical. Once we get rid of the radical, everything else is just the same. Right? How do you get rid of the, 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 the negative one? Well, negative one, we add one to the other side. And if you add one, you have phi x equal to 50. How do we get rid of the phi? We divide and therefore x is equal to 10, right? And again, if you want to check, if you want to check, you put in the 10, right? Phi times 10 is 50, 50 minus one uh, to give you uh, 49 and the square root of 49 is equal to seven. So we got that answer, okay? So if you look at this item here, if you look at this item, you can see what do I mean the radical by itself? Well, as long as it does not have any more addition or any subtraction, then it's by itself. In this case, we have a, a subtraction, right? There is a well, not subtraction, there's an addition that lingering with this radical, right? So the first thing before we square, the first thing before you raise it to the square, raise it to the third power, raise it to the fourth, raise it to the fifth, how, whatever the power you raise it to, the first thing is you need to know that that radical is by itself. And in this case, if the radical is by itself, we can raise it to whatever the power we want. But this one here, we do not have it. Right? And if we don't have this thing here, the first thing we need to do is we need to manipulate this item. We need to somehow, which most of the time do the opposite operation, which is subtract phi to the other side. Therefore, now my new problem, six minus phi, my new problem would be a radical, whatever inside the radical, I don't care, uh, a, a square uh, radical equal to one. And that's what we want, right? We want a radical equal to some number. Because how do I get rid of this radical? All I need to do is square them up. And if I square them up, this is what I'd have. The square and the square root cancel. One time one is still one. So again, I have three X plus 10 equal to one. And once we have this thing here, all we need to do is take away, um, take away the, the 10. And now what do I have, which is 3x equal to negative 9. Therefore, I have <clears throat> x is equal to negative 3, okay? And if you look at this thing here, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at this item, and, and this thing bring us to the, to the next thing that we have. If, if you look at this, this item here, let's plug into this formula. I have always see that if you plug into this formula, you have a square root, a square root of three, right? Three times a negative three plus 10. Now, do you agree that three times a negative three, that will give you inside the square root, which you have a square root of negative nine plus 10, which 
negative nine plus 10 will give you a square root, a square root of one. And again, a square root of one is just equal to one. So Elba, I see that inside this thing here, when you plug in negative, when you plug in negative three, when you plug in negative three for the X, that's what you have, right? Negative three times three will give you nine, negative nine, negative nine plus 10 will give you one. Square root of one is equal to one. And do you see that one plus five is equal to six? So we can see that if you plug it in, our answer work out, right? We, we, we plug it into our original problem, our answer work out, we got, we good to go, right? And like I say, if you plug 10 in here, five times 10 is 50, 50 minus one will give you 49, square root of 49 is equal to seven. And we have it, we, we, that's our answer, right? So, First of all, question with A or B, uh, we did a few of this thing yesterday with my handwriting. Uh, today, we, we have it type it up. So question with A or B in this item, ladies and gentlemen. So one thing that you need to make sure is, one thing that you may need to make sure, and I mentioned this yesterday, right? I mentioned this yesterday uh, before we left, is I give you this item and same idea go is again, because of the square root have a addition, a square root have an addition of 10, we need to subtract 10 to the other side. So this is what we have, which square root of X minus 17 equal to negative seven. And if you remember yesterday, I told you, if you remember yesterday, we, I told you that if we have a radical, Again, the answer up here, this is what you need to make sure, or this is what you need to ask yourself. The answer up here, X is equal to negative three, that's fine. You can plug it in, work out, that's our answer. But right here, if you remember what I mentioned yesterday, if the radical, is there any number you pick for X and then you plug it into this item here, and then you take a square root of that number and that number will give you a negative seven, right? That's, that's the question. The question is find me an X, whatever number you can come up with, give it to me so that when I plug it in here, I take a square root of that number and a square root of that number result in a negative seven. And if you remember, I, I mentioned that there is no way for now, it's impossible for you to find an answer, for you to find me a square root of something and it's equal to a negative seven, okay? There is no way for now, for the time being, right? After, after class today, there is a way, but for now, there is no way, it's impossible for you to find me a number and then you take a square root of that number and the result of that number is negative seven, okay? And if you recognize that, and I mentioned to you guys, if you recognize that this item here is basically no solution, we can stop here and we say just no solution is impossible. I, I, there's no way, there's no rumor that I can find. And I will state that there are real number that we can find that we plug in here. The next section, there's an imaginary number, but for now there is no real number, there's no real solution. Okay, so again, that's the reason is there's no way you can take a square root. And if you have a calculator, you can take a square root of a negative number. Your calculator will say error. There's no way you can take a square root and, 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 and give a negative number, okay? Uh, again, I, I mentioned this right here. If you were to, to go on and, and do it, this is what you do, right? You square on one side, you square on the other side, you subtract this item here you will get X equal to 66. But if you were to plug it back in here, if you were to plug back in here, everybody see that we have a square root of 66 minus 17. What is the square root of, what is a square root of 66 minus 17? Well, 66 minus 17, this thing will give me 49. And the square root of 49, everybody see that a square root of 49 
is equal to seven. But the number I'm looking for is negative seven. I'm not looking for seven. And that's why negative seven and seven, they are not the same. Okay. So again, even though you can find an answer for X, but when you plug it back in, this answer does not justify the question that they ask you. Okay. If you plug into the original one, also, if you plug it into the original problem, like we did before, everybody see that if we plug 66 in here, if we plug 66 in for this X, 66, take that, you give you 49, square root 49, seven, seven plus 10 is not equal to three, right? So for this particular problem, there is no way it's impossible for you to find a number for X that when you plug it in here and it gives you three, okay? So for this problem, um, basically there's no real number. There's no real solution, okay? Um, like I mentioned, you can stop here. You don't have to do the rest. We can stop there. But again, if, if you want to do the rest, make sure you check your answer. So ladies and gentlemen, question with A, B, or C here. Question of how to solve this radical equation. So those are the easy problem, right? Those are the easy problem. Uh, I check here. I mentioned uh, again. Um, we have this item here that we check. Um, this is the problem come here, uh, not the problem, but you might encounter this problem in your, in your- I have a question. Question. When we reduce it, like, we'll take any of these examples. We'll, we'll take, take B, for example. Will it ever go as far as having us to like solve for X as well? Or would we, when we're just doing radical equations, we would just stop there? For B. If we take B, will we ever have to also solve for X or do we just stop there if we're just doing radical equations? We, for, for A and B, we solve for X. Oh, wait, yeah, we, no, we, never mind. Your X is right. by itself right now. Yeah. Right. Uh, for, for C, you don't have to solve for X because we recognize that there's no solution. So we can just stop. For, for right. this C problem, um, the reason why, I, you know, the reason why I say we can stop here is because we recognize that is, there's no solution. I mean, you don't have to do any of this thing here. For, for C, you don't have to do any of this thing here because there's no way we can do it. But A and B, we solve X, X is by itself. Okay, I see what I did wrong. I see what I did wrong, my bad. Thank you. Right. No problem. Uh, again, um, I mean, C, we, we can solve it too. It's just that even though we solve it, the number that we find is not the solution that we looking for. And, and that's why I say there's no, there's no solution in, in this item here. Um, A and B, we, we solve it. The X is by itself. That's what we want, right? Uh, we solve and whatever we solve, that's what we have is X by itself. So um, it's just C I mentioned, you know, is equal to a negative number. When you have a square root and equal to a negative number, you don't need to solve it because there's no answer. It's impossible, okay? Um, any other question here? So now the problem come is now, this is where a, a few of you guys probably will, will, will get a little bit Troublesome, right? The problem start to get troublesome. Uh, the reason is is pretty much bring you the whole the whole circle. It is pretty much tell you uh, to do a, a few stuff. Um, this thing here, first of all, recognize that the difference is we have a radical over here, and then we have a binomial over here, right? And the previous three problem, we have just a radical and equal to a number, a radical equal to a number, a radical plus something equal to a number. But now we have a radical equal to some X minus nine. So first thing first, is my radical by itself? And you will say, yes, the radical is by itself. So we just go with that pattern because the radical by itself to get rid of the radical, this is what we need to do is we need to square them up, right? We need to square the first item. We need to square the second item. 
And if we square this item, this is where we run into trouble because if we square this thing here, last time we have only seven times seven, but this time we have X minus nine times X minus nine, right? If you were to break it down, this is what we have is we have X minus nine times X minus nine, right? Again, the radical, the radical and the, the radical and the square root, they cancel out. That's why I only have seven X minus three. But over here, in order for me to multiply or raise it to the power, this is basically tell me X minus nine, X minus nine. And as you can see, or some of you already saw that, oh my goodness, right? Uh, because we have X minus nine times X minus nine, we need to foil them out. So this is what we need to do is we need to foil this side out. And if we foil which X times X, X times a negative nine, negative nine times X, negative nine times negative nine, right? X times X to give you X squared, X times negative nine to give you negative nine X, negative nine X times X to give you negative nine X, and negative nine times negative nine to give you 81. Again, as you can see, if I foil them out, this is what I have. And this is what we did in chapter five. The first time first, outside time outside, inside time inside, last time last. And if we combine like term, my new problem, or this is my problem is x squared minus three equal to, I mean, seven x minus three equal to x squared minus 18 x plus 81. And you say, wow, Mr. Tran, you make the problem bigger and bigger and bigger. We haven't, we haven't done anything to make this thing smaller yet. And, and this is where the problem come in is if we were to do this thing here, now we run into the next obstacle. We run into the next item. And, and let me ask you, how do we solve for X when there's a square? When there's an X square, what have we learned before? How do we solve the problem where it's at an X square. If you remember, in order to solve a problem where it's an X square, we need to set it equal to zero. We need to move everything to the X square side and set it equal to zero because we need to factor the problem out, right? So again, for me, I move everything to one side. I move everything to the X square side, meaning I need to get rid of this seven X. How do I get rid of this seven X? I subtract them, right? And then I need to get rid of this. I need to get rid of this negative three. And to get rid of negative three, I need to add them to the other side. So that's where my negative seven X can form. And that's where my positive three come in. And if I do this, which give me combine like term, and if I combine like term, I have X squared minus 25 X plus 84 is equal to zero. If the zero is on the left-hand side, irritate your eye, just move the zero to the right. It doesn't matter. As long as it's equal to zero, doesn't matter where the zero is at. This can be equal on the left or can be equal to on the right, it's okay, okay? So if you look at this thing here, we have X squared minus 25 X plus 84, how do we solve this item? Like I mentioned, they bring you to the whole loop because we have to foil and now we have to factor. We have to say, well, is there two number multiply to give me 84, but add together to give me 25, right? Is there two number multiply to give me 84? Well, if we don't know, we say, well, one time 84, two times 42, that's not good. Three times uh, 28, that's not good because we need to add them together, right? We need to add them. So three and 28, um, if you subtract, you get 25, but, um, but we add, so that's not good. Four times 21, ah, four times 21 is 84. Four plus 21 is 25. And because we, at them, both of them will have the same sign, right? And then again, this thing here, this hopefully bring back memory because this is what we've been doing in chapter six, right? Um, foil them out, factor them out, and now we need to take each of them and set them equal to zero. 
And if we set it equal to zero, this is what we have is x equal to 21, x equal to four. And after all of this, ladies and gentlemen, after all of this, after all of this work, we kind of not out of the wood yet because you have to know if we have one answer or do we have two answer or we don't have any answer, meaning you have to plug it back in and check your answer. We have to plug in the negative, the 21 in, right? So if you plug in the 21, because they ask you solve and check, if you plug in the 21, wherever there's an X, wherever there's an X, I plug in the 21, right? So seven times 21, seven times 21 will get me 147. And 147 minus three, 147 minus three to give me 144, square root of 144 is equal to 12, which is the same as 21 minus 21 minus nine. And now if you plug in four in, if you plug in four in, everybody see wherever there's an X, I plug in a four. If you plug four in, you have 21, um, 28, four times, four times seven is 28, 28 minus three. And again, four minus nine is negative five. We can see that this is not gonna work out because the radical equal to a negative number. But again, square root of 25 is five. And as you can see, five is not equal to negative five. So there is only one answer for this problem. The only answer work out is 21. And, and this is where a lot of students, you know, if you do your homework, if you do your quiz on Connect Math, no, sorry, my math lab, uh, and if you type in two answers, you type 21 and three, or you type 21 and four, my math lab will tell you it's wrong because they only accept 21 because four is not the answer they're looking for. Okay, so that's the problem that you you will encounter. So. Uh, let's take a look at one more. And, and again, um, let's take a look at one more and then I will take um, the question uh, that you might have. So let's say same idea go, same item go. We have X plus three equals some radical, right? X plus three equal to a radical phi uh, X plus 21. And if we have this here, we know that this problem is very similar to A, it's just that it's the reverse of the two. What do we do? Well, the radical is by itself. I can square them up. And if I square them up, this is what I have is X plus three times X plus three, phi X plus 21. And X plus three times X plus three, if you know the special product, you will say that X squared plus six X plus nine. But if you don't know the special product, x times x is x squared, x times three is three x, three times x is three x, and three times three is nine. And now what do I do? I combine like term, the three x and three x to give me six x. So this is what I have. And this, after all of the FOIL, right? The only thing we did was we FOIL this thing out. And after all of the FOIL, this is my problem. And because of this problem have a x square, because the problem have a square in order for us, again, for now, for the time being, the only thing that we do in order for us to solve the x square is we need to set it equal to zero. How do I set it equal to zero? I need to subtract the phi x and subtract the 21. That's how I subtract. I basically move everything. I basically move this item here. I basically move this item, phi x and 21 to this side. And if I move it to this side, I need to do the opposite, which is subtract phi and subtract 21. And again, this is what I have, six x minus phi x, I still have one more x left. Nine minus 12, I still have a negative 12. Nine, smaller number, take away bigger number, I have a negative. So once I have this thing here, is that two number multiplied to get me 12, which in this case, now I need to factor them out. Is that two number multiplied to get me 12, but subtract to get me one, 
and hopefully you guys say that four and three. Four times three is 12, four minus three is one. And then we say X plus four equal to zero, X minus three equal to zero. And this is what we have is X equal to negative four, X equal to three. So what do we have here? Do you agree that we need to test our answer? And if we test our answer, if we plug a negative three in, if you plug in negative three, I mean negative four, you can see that this is not the correct answer because the radical cannot be equal to, a radical cannot be equal to a negative number. If you plug in three, if you plug in three, you have three times five is 15. 15 plus 21 to give me 36. Square root of 36 is six. So that is what our answer is. So again, this problem here, well, let me ask you guys a question. Uh, question here. And, and yes, I agree with you guys that it's a long problem. It's a long process, right? We have to square them up, FOIA them out, combine like term, factor them out, set it equal to zero, solve it. And after that, we're not done because we have to verify which one of the two is the correct answer or Sometimes there will be both. Uh, you know, the problem is there are some coincidence that both of the, the answer will work out. So you have to check your answer. So question here, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we will do more of this problem tomorrow. Um, let's take a look at, we, we did this problem. This problem is actually easier than it's look, even though it's to the third power. Um, we know that to get rid of the, 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 the Q root, right? To, to get rid of the Q root, all we need to do is raise to the third power. And, and we did this problem yesterday. The Q root and the third power that cancel out, three times three times three is 27. We add the five over and then we divide it by two. Right, so x is equal to um, 16. So um, let's take a look at chapter 11, okay. Um, chapter 11, this is where, remember earlier, remember earlier I told you that uh, if we have a radical, right, if we take a square root of a negative number, we say no real solution. So chapter 10.7 come in is they say, what if we can make it? What if we can do something about it? What if we call this imaginary? And this is where chapter 10.7 come in is they come in and they say, we have this new item, guys. We, we come up with this new item. And now instead of say, oh, no solution, no real solution, move on, no real solution. There's nothing to see here, no real solution. They say, we're gonna say this I. Every time you see a square root of a negative one, we will say now this is I, stand for imaginary, okay? So basically now, every time you see a square root of a negative number, Every time you see a square root of the negative number, you can simplify it, right? Back then, before chapter 10.7, if I give you this problem here, you say, no solution, Mr. Trent, thank you, I go on, right? But now, when we get to 10.7, basically now, you cannot just say no solution anymore. We will say that there is a solution and we call this a imaginary solution, okay? And again, how do we, 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 we simplify this item. Do you agree that square root of 81 is the same as 81 times a negative one, right? And if you see that 81 times a negative one is negative 81, then do you agree that it's the same as if it's multiplication, I can split them into two. Square root of 81 times one is the same as square root of 81 on the outside times square root of negative one on the outside, right? We when we have two items, we can split them into two, or when we have two, we can merge them into one. That's what the rule of, a product rule of radical is. 
And for now, you know that a square root of 81 is nine. That's a perfect square. The only thing new is when you see a square root of a negative one, we say that this is a imaginary number. And to make it imaginary number, we put an I. So now, basically all you do is if you see a radical, a square root of a negative number, we just put an I behind it. We say that this, we can simplify, but it's not a real number, it's an imaginary answer, okay? So 196, by now, hopefully you know that 169 is a perfect square, which is 13 times 13. 196 is also a perfect square, which is 14 times 14. So if you simplify this item here, the only thing we're doing is we say, well, square root of 196 is 14. I put an I in the back. Again, the I will always be in the back, ladies and gentlemen. You do not, you don't write I 14. You have to say 14 I. Okay. So again, um, this is what we, this is what the the new thing come in. This is the new item that they they ask you or they tell you that no matter what we have, as long as we have a square root of a negative number, there will be some I that you can or you need to extract out. So if you look at this item here, if you look at this item here, seventy-five is not a perfect square, right? Seventy-five is not a perfect square because we know that sixty-four is a perfect square, which is eight times eight, and eighty-one is a perfect square, which is nine times nine. Seventy-five is between that two number meaning probably eight point something if you plug it in, right? But now looking at this thing here, the goal is the same as before. If it's not a perfect square, we need to ask ourselves, is there any perfect square hidden, right? And if you look at this thing here, we can see that there is a perfect square hidden here because seven times 25 is seven five. But in this case, seven, I mean, three times 25 is 75. And in this case, three times a negative 25 is negative 75. And why do we use negative 25? Because if it's negative 25, we can bring out a pi i. Because negative 25, a square root of negative 25 is a perfect square. And because of a square root of a negative number, there's an i. And if you have something like this, you have to write an I in front of the radical. It's just that they don't want you to write an I in the back. And sometimes you extend the, the radical and you say a square root of three I, the I inside. So again, if you have a, a, a number and you have a radical, you always put your number in front of the radical. Unless it's like addition or subtraction, then you put in the in the back. Okay. So same idea go, same idea go. Um, 125 is 120. No, 125 is not a perfect square. Uh, it's a perfect cube, but it's not a perfect square. Um, 121 is a perfect square, right? 121 is 11 times 11. 144 is a perfect square. 124 is not a perfect square, right? So our goal is the same as before is, is there a perfect square in 124? Right, it is can four go into 124? And, and again, hmm, four can go 124, right? Uh, 31. So again, if you look at this thing here, what do we do? This is what one thing we can do is we can break this item down like before, right? We can say, well, if it's even, I can break it down into two. If it's even, I can break it down into, into two. Well, 34, I'm kind of stuck. Right, there's nothing I there's nothing I can break down the 31. I mean, 31. Right? So looking at this thing here, anything have the, the number underneath, I don't look at it. Meaning now, do you agree that I'm looking for a pair of two? And again, the pair of two, which is the two, that's what can come out. But to look at this thing here, this is the breakdown, right? 124 is the same as negative four times 31 because negative four times 31 will give you negative one to 24. And the only thing new is when you take out a two, you have to take out an I because there's an imaginary, because there's a radical of a negative number. 
And, and that's the only thing new in this item, ladies and gentlemen, in 10.7 is the only thing new is if there's a square root of a negative number, you have to extract out an I. You have to say that this is a imaginary number. This is a imaginary solution. And that's what we have is two I square root of 31. Okay. So question with this, this, this imaginary, this I, this complex number. So what do we do with this I? Well, this is basically, this is, no, the previous one is an imaginary number. This is basically the complex number here, ladies and gentlemen. The complex number is in the form of A plus BI. A plus BI is basically the, why it's called complex because the A is a real part and the I is an imaginary part, right? So if we have this item three, plus seven I, that's your complex number. The three is the real part of this number and the seven I is the imaginary number. So again, the reason is complex because you do have some real portion and you do have some imaginary portion in it, okay? So what do we do with this complex number? Well, there are a few things that we need to do is we need to know how to add, we need to know how to subtract, we need to know how to multiply. We need to know how to divide or rationalize, okay? So the first thing is, let's take a look at how do we add the complex number. Just like before, to add the complex number, all you need to do is take the real portion, add with the real portion, the imaginary, add with the imaginary. All you do is you say, well, basically we combine like term. What are my like term? My like term is the three and the 11. Those are my real portion. Those are my two items. I have a three and a seven. So again, I'll, not seven, three and the 11. So all I need to do is take three plus 11. That's why I have 14. The I, the I, which is seven I and three I, seven plus three will give me 10 I. So basically to add complex number, all you do is you combine like term. And again, same thing as before to subtract them. The only thing before uh, is, the only thing that you need to do before you subtract them is you need to distribute the negative in the second parenthesis, right? So the 18, the 18 minus phi i, the only thing we need to do is a negative time a positive will give me a negative three a negative time a negative will give me a positive 11. So in this case, when I combine them, I have 18 minus three will give me 15. A negative five plus 11i to give me six i. And again, basically you, you did this before, right? You combine like term. The only thing different is instead of an x, a y, a z, a, b, c, now you have an i in it. So if they don't have an I, you cannot combine them together. The only thing you can combine together is a, is an I with an I, imaginary with imaginary, and the real number, the constant with the constant. So question with A or B, how to add or how to subtract complex number here. So similarly, right, let's try another one. Same thing though, if you have four plus three I minus negative nine, minus 13i. So what do we do? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to distribute the negative in. A negative time a negative will give me a positive nine. A negative time a negative will give me a positive 13i. So again, to get rid of the parenthesis, I need to distribute that negative in. And once I do that, the only thing I need to do now is I need to combine like term. What are my like term? The like term is the four and the nine. Four plus nine is 13. The three I and 13 I, the three I plus the 13 I to give me 16 I. So question with A, B or C here, question of how to combine complex number, right? It's basically tell you to add complex number, subtract complex number is, but again, is based combined like term. Now, 
before we continue, someone say is, wait a minute here. If I is equal to a square root of one, and that's what I is. I is equal to a square root one, because if you see a square root of a negative number, you take out an I. And, and again, if you see, uh, in short, a square root of negative one is I. Now, what happened if we have I square? Right, what happened if we square on one side? Remember, if we square on this side here, if we square here, if we take a square and the square root, the square and the square root, they cancel out, right? So it's basically tell you that if we square on one side, we need to square on the other side. And if we square on this side, we square on the other side, this, what they give us is the I square. The I square is equal to negative one. So this is the two thing you need to, the two most important thing that you need to remember is if you see a square root of negative number, you take out an I. If you see an I square, you can convert it to negative one. Okay, so this is the two most important thing. And, and I think, um, you know, this is what I, I perform. I probably should give you this uh, before I give you the result. But again, this is what we have in, in the center of I square. So this two item is the most important two item that you will see is the I is equal to square root of negative one and the I square is equal to negative one. And we would do use this a lot in the next item later in German, the I square equal to negative one, okay? Make sure you remember the I square. When every single I square is can substitute to be a negative one. When you see negative one, you cannot substitute to become I square. Um, we don't do that. We only see that if there's an I square, we can convert to negative one. Um, let me skip this power of I for now. Um, let me skip this power of I for now. Let me let me do the other one. Um, let me do this one here first. Um, I, I'm not sure if if I'm not sure if if your uh, let me double check to see if my MATLAB asks you for the power of I. Uh, I know that I and I square is important. You would do that, but let me skip for I I to third and I to four in a bit. Um, I would double check to see uh, instead of trying to confuse you. Um, let's let's take a look at this item here. Let's say it, what do we do if we multiply? So remember last time, right? An I is equal to square root one. The I square is equal to one. And 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 again, the reason why I say that is very important. Thing, important is looking at this later in German. Do you agree that in order for you to multiply this complex number? Just like before, we need to distributive them in. We need to take four multiply to seven, four multiply to 11 i. And then we still have to take the three, multiply to seven, uh, the three i multiply seven and the three i multiply to the 11, right? So again, when you have a multiplication, this is what we need to do is we need to distributive them in. And if you distributive them in four times seven, four times negative, uh, four times 11, right? and three i times seven and three i times 11 i. And four times seven to give me 28, four times 11 i to give me 44 i, three i times seven to give me 21 i, three i times 11 i. Do you agree that three times 11 is 33? And like I mentioned, this is the important thing that I mentioned earlier. Why do I mention earlier? is every time you see an I square, every time you see an I square, you need to convert this to become a negative one. So meaning looking at this thing here, an I times an I will give you an I square, but now instead of say I square, you need to convert this to a negative one. And what is negative one times 33? Well, negative one times 33, do you agree that that is, will give you a negative 33? And if it's a negative 33, we have 28 minus 33 to give me a negative five. So as you can see, looking at this thing here, first of all, first of all, this is, your answer should be in this form. It should be a real number first, meaning again, it should be some constant, a real number. 
some constant, the, the real number, and then the complex item, which is the imaginary item have to be later, okay? So again, uh, this is your constant and your imaginary item, the I will always be in the back, okay? The I can never, you don't write 65 I plus uh, minus five, okay? We put your complex number, the I will always be in the back. But again, look at this thing here. This is the one thing on the new thing that I want to point out is this, right? This is the only thing new that I want to point out is when you see a square, an I square is become a negative one, okay? So that's what we want to, to emphasize because from here on out, you will see that is a, that is a lot of that. Um, well, Let's stop here. Let's stop here for today. Uh, we will do more of this problem. Um, we'll do more of this problem tomorrow. And then like I said, like I say, I will um, take a look at the, the, I will take a look at 